are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. for sin, and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work, and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of the Kings. David slept with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. The time that David reigned over Israel was 40 years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David and his kingdom was firmly established. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father David only he sacrificed and offered incense at the high places. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the principal high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said to him, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father, David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you, and you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, 
but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Be careful then how you live, 
not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. <coughs> so do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me and lives because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. The one who eats this bread will live forever. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Today's epistle, the Apostle Paul talks of giving thanks to God at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you first hear those words, you may say to yourself, what a ho-hum verse. Giving thanks to God. What else is there? Isn't that just what every Christian is supposed to do? But not so fast. There's more to it than just giving thanks. The Apostle goes on to add, at all times and for everything. <laughs> add that phrase to the end and what has become a matter of common courtesy, that is dropping God a little thank you note from time to time, is now something much bigger and far more difficult. Are we really supposed to give thanks constantly? More than that, how are we ever going to give thanks for everything? Surely Paul is engaging in a little sanctified exaggeration, a little holy hyperbole, right? Nope. The apostle is setting the bar pretty high. But that doesn't mean that because it's difficult, we ought to give up trying. Giving thanks at all times and for everything, is a lofty goal. How are we ever going to give thanks at all times? That would mean we'd have to stop doing some things, like complaining. <coughs> yes, complaining. It's not an easy thing to keep on complaining if you're feeling grateful, is it? Complaining is a rather odd thing. In a backhanded way, it makes us feel good. You know, misery loves company. Now, okay, maybe we'd prefer it if that huge, bodacious problem would just go away. But if it shows no sign of doing that, we'll settle for second best. We'll milk it for all it's worth. 
a ready supply of gripes we can pull out and use. Sort of like fingernails scratched across a chalkboard to make others pay attention to us. We've all known chronic complainers. Folks who scarcely ever have a good word to say about anything and a whole lot of negative things to say about everything. An army chaplain once told the story of being out on a training exercise with a battalion of soldiers. He was assigned to the signal corps. Now back in those days, before satellite phones and GPS systems, these were the soldiers who set up radio antennas and other communications gear so units could communicate with each other out in the field. Once they'd set up the antennas, they divided up into little teams who then maintained the equipment. The chaplain was out visiting one of these communication posts when he happened upon a soldier with a notably sour attitude. Well, soldier, how's it going today? Asked the chaplain. Ah, uh, chaplain, he admitted glumly, it's, it's a pretty bad day. And the chaplain went on to talk with this soldier about all the things that were bothering him. Now, none of them had anything to do with the field exercise, which, in fact, was going rather well. No, all the complaints were of a personal nature. Well, the next day, the chaplain moved on to another signal corps installation. He knocked on the door of the truck that served as both workstation and home away from home. And to his surprise, the same soldier answered the door. He had moved during the night. Well, how's it going today? Asked the chaplain. Ah, uh, chaps, it's, it's a pretty bad story. And then he went through the same down in the mouth litany as before. The third day, to his surprise, the chaplain ran into the very same soldier in another part of the operation. And you can pretty much guess what happened. Same question, same gloomy answer. You know, the chaplain continued, I met you yesterday and that was a pretty bad day. I met you two days ago and you told me that was a pretty bad day. It seems to me if this continues, someday you're going to stand before your maker who's going to ask you, how was your life? I've got a feeling the only answer you'll be able to give is, it was a pretty bad life. And then, the soldier smiled. The chaplain knew that he was finally getting through to him. He'd gotten the point. <clears throat> As should we all, when it comes to this business of complaining, which is the polar opposite of giving thanks. Now, sure, there are times in life when complaints are in order, but when complaining becomes a constant habit, the only thing it can accomplish is to drag us down. Very often, everyone else along with it. The antidote to that emotional spiral of doom is thanksgiving. To seek at all times, on rainy days and sunny days, to find something for which to offer thanks. That begins to approach what this verse means by giving thanks at all times. The Apostle Paul also advises us to give thanks for everything. Now, here's where things get really sticky. Paul directs our attention not just to the timing of our thanksgivings, but also to their substance. It's one thing to thank God for a promotion at work. It's quite another to offer thanks for a pink slip. It's one thing to thank God for a family member who's helpful, cooperative, and a joy to be around. It's quite another to offer thanks for the black sheep of the family, the one who's nothing but a trial to everyone. There are circumstances when thanksgivings don't come easy, when the act of saying, thank you, Lord, is the spiritual equivalent of hard labor. And yet, this is exactly what today's epistle instructs us to do. Give thanks for everything. You may be inclined to think at this point, why bother? What's the purpose of giving thanks for everything?
when doing so is such hard work. I mean, isn't there something unnatural about trying to make ourselves feel thankful? Well, here's a little secret. You don't necessarily need to feel thankful right at that moment in order to give thanks. It's sort of like a parent saying to a child, I love you, when the child has done something really naughty and deserves to be punished. Amid the punishment, the child turns to you with tear-stained cheeks and asks, Mommy, Daddy, do you love me? Now, maybe you don't feel a whole lot of love for your child at that moment. Maybe there's a part of you that can imagine nothing beyond meeting out terrible retribution to the little offender, even though you never actually do that. So, what should a parent say in response to that question? Well, the answer is simple. You respond by saying, I do love you. You may not feel it right then, but you know, deep down, on an intellectual level, that you do love your child very deeply. And so, you don't respond out of the immediate emotion of the moment. You offer the only answer that you could possibly give. You know that I love you. It's the same with Thanksgiving. It's awfully hard to give thanks to God for the troubling medical test result your doctor just told you about. But it can be done, even if it does seem like a bit of a spiritual stretch. It's a matter of good theology, really, what we believe about God when the going gets tough. Our faith teaches that God created the heavens and the earth, and that when each stage of creation was completed, the Lord pronounced it good. Now that means, even though some parts of creation defy explanation, that may in our estimation have fallen from their original glory, they're still part of an otherwise good universe. It can be hard, for example, to give thanks for mosquitoes. Which one of us has ever offered a prayer of thanksgiving for a mosquito? We're just not up there. And yet, our theology tells us that even mosquitoes were created by God, and that somewhere in the great scheme of things, they have their part to play, along with the leaping dolphins and the soaring eagles. We may not see it right at this moment, but maybe we will someday, in the next life, if not this life. Maybe you'll be able to thank God for the bug perched on your forearm, knocking back a hemoglobin cocktail. Not now, but maybe someday. In all seriousness, though, even suffering can, on some occasions, have a positive aspect. It may sound Pollyannish to opine that every cloud has a silver lining, but there's a fair bit of truth in that statement. In the meantime, consider offering this honest prayer, or something like it. Lord, I don't know what you're doing with this situation, but give me the faith to thank you for it anyway. Now surely, that fits within the definition of giving thanks for everything. One example of that kind of prayer was uttered by Teresa of Avila, a notable spiritual leader of the medieval church. One day, Teresa was out for a walk with several of the sisters from her order when they happened to cross a small footbridge. The bridge began to swing and sway, and before long, Teresa and all her sisters found themselves standing knee-deep in the frigid waters of the stream. Teresa is said to have offered this prayer. Lord, I know you have promised never to give us more than we can handle. But sometimes I wish you didn't trust me so much. <laughs> now, it may not be an out-and-out -out prayer of thanksgiving, but it comes from a stubbornly thankful place. So, 
Give thanks always and for everything. May that be the motto for us all. Let us stand in front of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, on page 8. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he has sent him into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in the truth. Live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Guide the people of this land and all of the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and for your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bless all whose lives are closely linked to ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation, especially the people of Ukraine, Israel, and Gaza. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we all may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. service over in the parish hall, which can be reached through that door back there on your left, and then directly across the courtyard. The Gabriel Tree Project will have a meeting after the service today. You can read about that on page 17. Gabriel Tree Project, of course, is our Christmas gift project that occurs in November and December. If you'd like to be part of that, read about that on page 17 and see your point of contact, and I'll stay for the meeting after service today. Subscribe to the Lord, the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his court.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you, you At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, who fulfilled your law, who opened for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope who proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we wait the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father,
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have led us to the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever.
in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.